Let's get into it, man. Um, yeah, you got this fight, man, coming up May 21st. Alan Abedovsky. Um, when you when they offered you the fight, man, what did you think of it initially? Uh, I got to look him up with my coach. Looked at him, I was like, okay, he's a, he's gonna bang. He wants to stand and fight and punch and throw strikes and do things like that. I was like, that that sounds fun to me. It's just another one of those tests that I need to get to where I'm trying to go. So exciting matchup and you know nothing bad to say about the guy. He's he's a gamer. He'll show up and fight. So I'm super excited about it. Now with with his skill set though, like what do you see in him? Uh, I see he comes from a pretty tough camp. He trains out there with Kamzat and those guys. Um, you know, I mean, he's kind of like started off the same as me. Um, didn't have the great the greatest start in the UFC. You know, he's coming off a loss right now. Um, I did see he got knocked out. So I won't allow myself to get finished by him. And he's been finished by someone else already. Uh, but, you know, he seems it seems like an awesome matchup. It doesn't seem like something that's like, you know, like hand chosen for me or like the fans like to say, like anything like that. He's, he's tough. He's a gamer, but I think he's, he's definitely beatable. He's shorter than me. I think he's like uh, 5'10 or something like that. So that sounds great to me, too. <laughs> I believe this fight has been, you know, the, this fight was announced like a long time ago, right? Like how many months have you known about this? Uh, maybe like a month and a half ago now. I had a three-month yeah. camp. It was three months from the announcement. Now we're like just at a month or a little bit less than a month now. So, yeah, it's the longest camp I've had my entire life. So I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving oh, it. Oh, really? really? Yeah, it's, it's the good. longest camp I've ever had. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah. Yeah, you've had – I believe you've had a lot of the, the short notice switch-ups and all that stuff. So it's, it's probably really nice to have that time to just – zone into a certain opponent and, and focus on them right exactly yeah just to totally just focus up on one you know obviously fights fall out all the time you know and that's a huge possibility still but i think both of us are going to make it to this fight and uh yeah it's been awesome to be able to just find training partners who can look like him you know resemble him and just having enough time to do that type of stuff it's it's amazing and then I had Icon Mills for this fight, so my my weight's been just phenomenal. Phenomenal, excuse me. Um, and just having enough time to just focus on all like myself, you know, all these other fights, I never got to like focus on me. I would just like accept the fight and then be fighting in like two weeks. So yeah. it's just a just a gigantic just benefit right now from having a big long camp. I love it. It's like a new frontier for you, right? In a way. Yeah, yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> I want to have this all the time. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of fighters, they change that up a little bit when they get to the UFC. They notice like, hey, I, I can't take these fights on two weeks, three weeks anymore. I got to have full camps. You know, even like a, a guy like Justin Gaethje, you know, he's fighting for the title. He rarely ever takes a short notice fight. He always has a full camp heading into a fight. And uh, it shows that it's beneficial for certain fighters. Yeah, especially when you've already put that time in to, like, earn that. You know what I mean? Because that's something – I feel like as a fighter, like, to have a camp, that's something you have to earn. Like, you almost have to, like, earn your camp because before you, you know, earn it, like, they're just like, hey, I need you to fill in. If you don't fill in, then, hey, there's your shot. You know what I mean? And it's just – it's kind of, like, really shitty, like, to basically have to accept whatever – the first fight is because there's just not a second opportunity guaranteed. <laughs> yeah, that is real shitty. That is a very good word to describe that man as a fighter, because you're, you're kind of cornered into a position in a way. Kind of. I mean, yeah. Cause like as a fighter, you're not going to be like, like, unless you honestly believe that guy is better than you, like a fighter's not going to be like, Oh no, I need, I need longer than two weeks to prepare for him. I can't beat him in under two weeks. You know what I mean? Because this is such an egocentric sport. Like you're constantly like drilling things into your own head. Like I'm better. I can beat him. He's not good enough to beat me. He doesn't train harder, you know, as hard as me. Like that, I feel like that's always happening in this sport that it's so hard to turn down an opportunity. Uh, even if you feel like, you know, you wish, you could have had, you know, like more time or, you know, something like that. And on top of that, you have the the element of if you fight 
more, then you could get to your next contract and get paid more, right? Or or they just won't sign you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, if you lose, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So it's a rough sport, man. It's a rough sport. Um uh now uh going back to uh what you're talking about about uh icon meals, man. How of a, how big of a difference maker is that during a camp? Because I feel like nutrition and food prep and all that stuff as a fighter is probably the most mind twisting of all of them. You know what I mean? Because when you train, you go to the gym, you have a coach, they're going to train you, you have training partners. It's kind of all laid out there for you, but food is different. Well, it, it only is like different just because like you get to where you're training at least twice a day. And then you know, like when I was amateur, like <laughs> I would train a lot, but like I'd be stopping at McDonald's, you know, or, or somewhere for some fast food. And that's not giving me good energy for later. You know what I mean? Like by my by my second workout, I'm like taking a nap in the car, you know. But since I got what I call Mills, like, you know, I'm traveling to KC like I, you know, like I have been for a while. And, um you know, I'm waking up in the morning, 10 a.m. training after driving all night long and full of energy, you know, not even stressing, oh, I need to stop and put some food in my belly. You know what I mean? I'm, I already got my meal set out ready for me to make it. I'm going to go heat that mug up real quick and eat it. You know, it's just been a huge just the entire process right now for this fight has just been just a blessing, man. Just just so I'm just so blessed to have the opportunity have the time to prepare for the opportunity and then have my meals covered. So I don't even have to stress, excuse me, stress that. Yeah. It's been amazing. Is, do you feel like your camp for your debut compared to this camp? Like what are the, the, the major differences for you? Well, I didn't have a camp for my debut for starters. Mm -hmm. My debut was on like a two and five day notice. So, yeah, I mean, that alone makes a giant difference, but as well as, you know, I, I kind of, like, know what to expect. People are not getting knocked out like that. Like, people are not, you know, quitting like that. Like, anybody that we fight at this point is going to fight the whole time. You know, they don't care about being tired. Um, you know, they don't care about that stuff. Like, they're like, okay, we're going to be tired. Let's just, you know, let's just fuck it up for 15 <laughs> minutes. And I'm going 15 minutes. Are you? Yeah, I'm going 15 minutes. All right, we're going 15 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you, we've seen some of those like in the last couple of years. You know, just people just drained and then just going at it, and they just can't like finish each other, and they just go all fifteen minutes of just it's you know what that word slobber knocker or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Like, there's a lot of those. Yeah, like that freaking comes at Shemayev and uh, yeah, <laughs> Gilbert Burns yeah. fight this weekend. Like <laughs> nobody expected that to go three rounds. But that I love was probably it when, the uh, funnest 15 minutes I've had in a long time. Yeah, that, that I love that he uh Gilbert was just throwing the right hand overhead, right? Not not even setting it up. He was just trying to like Fuck it, just, just catch it. Yeah. Boom! Anytime he throws a jab, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah it was amazing, dude. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah it's a great fight, man. Uh uh what do you think, man, in this one? What do you think what do you think's gonna happen in this one? You know, you're I, I feel like with the camp and with the, the, the switch ups, mentally, I think that's the most important thing is going in there with everything like running smoothly. How do you feel like you're gonna perform in this one? I feel really confident. I've been wrestling a lot more. I feel like we'll see a traditional uh ugly man Joe. Um when I first started, man, I was hugely jujitsu oriented, grappling oriented. Um, that was just my safe haven, you know what I mean? Like striking was scary to me at the time. So anytime it would get like that for me, I would just resort back to my, you know, jujitsu and my wrestling and stuff. And, and, uh, you know, once I get, once I be, uh, went pro and I started having to lose that fear of striking, I kind of, you know, got away from my grappling and stuff just cause you know, it's really, really difficult to like focus on all these different things yet like dumb it all down to one like one aspect of it like you're like all camp you're working on you know kickboxing boxing wrestling jujitsu but when you go and fight your opponent you're having to focus on the one major key that you know you and your camp decided you're better at so mm -hmm. you know when you're when you're doing things like that like it's it's hard to like 
focus on what you're good at because you're so focused on what they're not good at. You know what I mean? So now that I've had enough time and I still have more time to focus on things, I'm definitely going to resort back to my old self, you know, take this guy down, not give up on that takedown. Um, you know what I mean? And put my hands on him, but not feel like I have to do this to win or I have to do that to win. Just kind of just, you know, let it just have, let myself have fun and, and just figure out as I go what's working, you know, not just go in there thinking, oh, I've been working on wrestling all camp long. I'm going to take him down and smash his face. No, nah, because this is the UFC, man. So I'm definitely going to try and take him down. If he doesn't go down right away, I'm going to put them hands on him. Dude, I've been working so much cardio since my debut. I just really want to get tired in the first round and then just get stronger and faster as it goes on. That's what I feel like. I'm looking to show, you know, the fans and everyone right now, just that I can get tired and push harder and harder. I think one thing that's kind of lost in this, and I think most people probably won't even talk about it, is that you lost your pro debut and came back and just knocked off a gang of dudes in a row, finished them, and now, you're, you know, you lost your pro UFC debut. Yeah. That gives you confidence, right? That you can do this. Like, it's not like it's your first loss in MMA. I think sometimes right. if you get to the UFC undefeated and you lose for the first time, it can have a traumatic effect on you, right? But you've been through the fire, so it helps you tremendously, most likely, right? Yeah, no, you, yeah, that's a huge point, man. And like, even when I took the loss, that was kind of something I was telling myself, like, to help deal with it because, like, I mean, I wasn't beaten. You know what I mean? We went three rounds. Yes, he definitely put out more work than me when it counted and he got the win. But I mean, he didn't kill my will. You know what I mean? I didn't give up, kept fighting. And I stuck in there with somebody who's been in the UFC quadruple the time that I have. So yeah, it, it did nothing but boost my confidence and just show me like, look, you got to do, you got to go back to, like I said before, my roots and where I'm from and <clears throat> just get in the gym and put in more work than I have been in these last you know, to in preparation for these last few fights, man, and just evolve. And if I go and evolve, then I'm going to get the same outcome as I got before. Because Jordan Newman, my pro debut, didn't beat me. You know what I mean? He got the win, but he didn't beat me. And I had to fight through adversity, and that made me who I am now. So Jamie Pickett did a great job. He got that win, and that helped me become who I feel like I am becoming right now. And I'm so excited to show it, man. Biggest thing for me is that my cardio has just been – the most evolutionary aspect of my game right now just because like yeah i pushed through a 15 minute fight but dude obviously like my gas tank was not where it needed to be so that's been the biggest thing i've been working hard to just try and evolve and it's not easy to evolve cardio you gotta run a lot you gotta you know be tired and and just start working out as soon as you get tired like that's the hardest <laughs> thing right there <laughs> That's the worst thing, you know what I mean? Like, most people don't. <laughs> You'll go like when you get tired, miles right before starting class, like what? You're like putting yourself at a disadvantage, and you know it's a sport that you get beat up in, which is not not a fun uh, position to be in. No, uh, it yeah, it's just it seems like uh, yeah, just everything's flowing much better off that. And and I saw you know people commenting on your last fight saying that you know if uh, if Holmes had his cardio, that fight goes a totally different way. Do you feel yeah. that? Yeah, no, I mean, because I had him hurt in the first, you know, and honestly, you know, and it, it was a lot of my cardio, but obviously I was nervous, I was shy. It's my UFC debut, okay. Mm -hmm. People need me to admit that, okay, I was nervous, I was shy, okay. But like, even still, man, like, if I could just keep the pace I had in the first going at least another round, at least half a round, yeah. things could have probably looked different because yeah. I only got to watch the fight initially, like the very next day. I haven't watched it since yeah. like the day after the fight, we had the fight. And even then I was like, wow, I did not know I came out like that first round. I was like, dude, where did that go? You know what I mean? Where did that energy that I was putting off in the first round go immediately after the first? And I was like, man, it had to be because of that takedown he landed at the end of the round. Right at the end of the first, he landed a really nice takedown. He didn't do anything with it, but, uh, you know, I worked my way back up. And it was like right at the end of the first. 
And I just remember going into the second round, just like great, just done. Like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, that adrenaline dump. Did you feel that? Oh, absolutely. But yeah. I, I got, I had an adrenaline dump before the fight. Like mm. it was in the back, like the camera crew came and we're doing stuff, you know, mm. and then Kraus yeah. kind of got me hyped up, you know, just like, yeah. And I'm, you know, hitting this sick little combo we're working on. And then the yeah. camera guys left the room and I'm like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, a, it's a roller coaster of emotions, man. That's what, you know, a lot of people talk about is controlling your emotions before, during, and even after the fight. You know what I mean? Just that's, I guess that's something you learn as, as you grow in the sport. Um, a couple more questions, man. The first one is about crypto, you know, and the, uh, and the UFC introducing crypto bonuses for each event. You know, what is your thoughts on cryptocurrency? Are you into that stuff? And uh, what do you think about these bonuses? I'm not super into it. Um, I feel like I'm kind of like an old soul and stuff like that is a little beyond me. <laughs> but uh, hey, I'm always down for a bonus. You know what I mean? And I feel like as long as they can teach us how to use it, Mm -hmm. I think I think that I'll be okay with being offered that type of bonus. You know what I mean? If they just toss me a bonus that some shit I gotta like keep track of on my phone, mm -hmm. like, look guys, I just fight. Like <laughs> pull that out, pull that out. That's what you're gonna be like. Pull it out, give me cash, put it in my bank right away. Yo, I, I need wanna... you to withdraw that and, and... <laughs> yeah. next day, you know, like but Sunday. I think it's cool. I like that the UFC is uh you know, trying to stick with the times and, uh, you know, stay relevant. I love that. That's one of the biggest things about this sport is just staying relevant. MMA, man. MMA is a, it's a rough sport. You know, fighters go through so much. But what is the level of suffering do you think fighters have to overcome to get to the highest level, to the UFC, to the Bellators, to the PFL? I think if, there, if I had to put the level of suffering that a fighter ha would have to go to on a scale, I would put it mm -hmm. at like a four out of five. Because, you know, not only are you broke for a long time, you know, like I would say 75% of fighters are flat broke, mm -hmm. you know, like, and that's not even talking about the people at the highest level because the highest level is probably only like 10% of the sport. There's yeah. still, you know, thousands of organizations out here paying guys $300 mm -hmm. a show. $300 to win, you know? So a lot of it is sacrificing being broke, sacrificing time with your family, you know? Like, I have a five-year-old child, but the first three years of his life, I was at the gym seven days a week, eight hours a day. Me and his mom didn't even work out just because of the fact that I was putting my, my job that was, I could barely consider a job before them. You know, like, look, babe, I got to, I had to go to the gym at 10 a.m. and I'm not going to be back till 9 p.m. I'm sorry. I, I, that's just how it was, you know? So, you know, and that, this ain't the only job doing that, though. You know, a lot of men out here are sacrificing time with their families to provide. But, you know, aside from that, it's just like, I feel like I deal with like mental strain often. You know, a lot of times after a long, hard day, I don't have the energy to give to my family just because I'm really, you know, maybe I had a shitty sparring session that I can't stop thinking about, or, you know, maybe I got hurt, you know, that I can't stop thinking about, you know, Oh shit. What if that, what if I can't fight? What if I hurt my foot or, you know? So yeah, man, it's, it's a very tough sport. There's not a lot of reward uh, until, you know, you get to a certain level. Um, and there's not a lot of blueprint, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's a few people that you can look at and try and like mimic the way they took their career. But the main ones are these mainstream guys who all they know how to do is talk shit, you know, and be not even what this sport resembles, you know, like mm -hmm. I much more prefer the respectful, you know, like, you know, kind of like the Gracies, you know, I'm a small guy. I'll go find a big old dude. Fuck it. Like, this is what I do. But a lot of that is missing nowadays in the sports. So, 
Yeah, man, I feel like we sacrifice a lot and there's constantly like battling with your ego involved and it's not for everybody. This sport is not for everybody. <laughs> and it's definitely not for everybody. One last question. Right now, currently, I'm embedded with a fight team, training with them, you know, trying to live the lifestyle as a fighter. And after six months, I will be taking an MMA fight. Any advice for me? I would say, man, just be all in. You know, don't don't doubt yourself because you're obviously putting in the work. You're there all, you know, all these months. Just just be all in. Don't be a whether I win or lose kind of guy. Be there. There's no way I can lose. You know what I mean? You're not going in there to possibly lose. You're going in there to show what you've been working hard to, to accomplish. So just be all in. All right. I appreciate it, man. May 21st, you're going to be all in UFC Fight Night Las oh, Vegas. Yeah. Joseph. Appreciate the time, man. Always, always a good chat, man. Yeah, John, I appreciate your time, brother, really.